Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. Today we are going to do what is probably going to be the shortest video I've filmed so far um, and I'm going to film my March money diary slash no buy check-in. It's Sunday the 29th of March when I am filming this. I am hoping to also get it edited and uploaded today so that I don't miss my Sunday upload. So we are technically two days before the end of March but we are in an unprecedented situation. The coronavirus situation is happening, shops etc are on lockdown. So I don't think I'm going to be spending any money in the next two days. I don't plan to be spending any money in the next two days in terms of what would come out of my budget. And I certainly don't plan to break my no buy in the next two days either. So I think we're probably safe to film this a couple of days early. Let's go into my budget first and how I spent my budget in the month of March. <laughs> On the 1st of March, I went to brunch with my friend Lauren. Now, we'd actually, if you watched my February budget, we bought a voucher um, and that was us using it on the 1st of March. So I didn't actually pay for my brunch. However, I spent £7 on a taxi to brunch. I decided to walk, realised about an hour into my walk that I was not getting there on time. So called a taxi for the rest of the way. Really just bad planning could have been completely avoided had I mapped my route better, paid more attention to my route and not got kind of completely lost and taken a detour. I would have got there in time but yeah bad planning that's why I spent seven pounds so not not a planned purchase and not one that I'm happy to have had to spend. I left five pounds as a tip at brunch because although our voucher obviously covered the cost of our food and drink um, it didn't cover the tip so I left five pounds tip and that was everything I spent that day when I was out however later that day I also booked my ticket to Uncle Vanya which cost me 106 pounds and 40 pence so the taxi came under taxis so in terms of in my categories of spending the tip came under socializing the taxis came under taxis and the Uncle Vanya ticket for 106 pounds and 40 pence came into experiences and services Speaking about how I felt pre-coronavirus, kind of blowing my mind and kind of changing how I think about everything, um, one of the things I kind of wanted to talk about, which now seems really silly and irrelevant, but I feel like I need to discuss the feelings and thoughts that I had in the first half of the month, because that is how my no buy and my um, budget project was progressing before coronavirus came in and kind of blew it all out of the water so one of the things with that is that Uncle Vanya I was actually intending to go see it nearer the end of its run but I decided because I was going to London the next weekend to see a number which I bought the ticket for in my February budget I decided although it would actually have been better for my budget had I bought the Uncle Vanya ticket at a later date and bought it for later in the run, it's only the tickets that are coming out of my budget at this point when I book to go to London for theatre things. When I book a hotel and um, a train, that's not coming out of my budget. So the train is coming under public transport and the hotel is coming under health and safety because if I have to be in London for the evening, I'm not going to be wandering the streets. So I'm not taking that part of doing a London trip out of my budget but if I had gone to see Uncle Vanya later in its run and I'd had to pay the pay that money outside of my budget I would have overall been spending more money so that was why I decided to go see Uncle Vanya the same day that I was down to see a number um, and do one matinee and one evening performance so that it was one set of expenses outside of my budget. I'm really glad I did. I saw Uncle Vanya on the Saturday and the theatres closed on the Monday so I am very very glad that I did get to see it and um, it was absolutely brilliant. I'm really hoping that they reopen um, and if you get a chance to see it I would really highly recommend it. I don't see it happening because of course these theatres are booked for other things later in the year that you know when Uncle Vanya would have in theory finished its run as expected so I don't know but if it does reopen both it and a number which I saw on that London trip I saw that at the Bridge Theatre and um, were both absolutely phenomenal so if they do reopen Highly recommend. On to the 2nd of March, I met my friend Lindsay for dinner and I spent £20 exactly. So again, that came under socialising. On the 4th of March, I met some of my other friends for dinner um, and spent again exactly £20. I don't know if I actually did it with Lindsay, but when I went for dinner with the other girls, um, what I did was I took a £20 note out of the bank. 
and that meant that that's what I was sitting with in my purse and I it, it was quite good in that it just stopped me ordering that extra drink that I might have ordered kind of thing because I knew if I went over my £20 that I had in my purse I was going to have to pay it by card. It was almost a bit like but I've taken this £20 out now and I want to use it for this purpose. I would recommend that for when post coronavirus we can go back to going out for meals and socialising. It can be a bit counterproductive I think because if I take cash out and I don't use it all I will have a tendency to fritter away the rest of it and that's partly why I am recording food on the go in my budget as well because I know that if I've got a couple of pounds in my purse or whatever I'll maybe be like oh, I'll just nip into taste and get a bottle of juice and whatever that I potentially wouldn't go in and buy if I was going to have to pay it by card. You know if I've got change rattling about it annoys me and I want rid of it really quickly I find it quite irritating. So that's the kind of other side of why in general maybe paying by card is overall better because it then doesn't leave me with excess cash that I end up spending that I maybe wouldn't have spent had it not been taken out of the bank in the first place but on the flip side of that if it's something specific like going for dinner taking out a sort of set amount and saying this easily covers like your main course and your drink or whatever if that's what you need to do to stop you ordering that extra drink or that dessert that you don't really need um, when I say you I mean me but maybe you if you're also trying to budget you know it's I found that helped I did also want to say I went to ZZ with the girls from the brownies when we went for dinner not the brownies the girls I take the brownies with and ZZ are constantly I use their wi-fi once and now I get their emails and I swear to god like every week ZZ have a different offer on so we got I think 30% off our food so I got I actually got two starters um, because I couldn't choose between them so I get two starters and two Diet Cokes and whatever that was it was less than £20 because I would have left a tip as well and it cost me exactly £20 so ZZ's if you're looking for somewhere to get a deal I swear like every week there is a new set menu or money off or £5 off when you spend this amount or whatever there is a different offer every week so ZZ's might be worth checking out if you're trying to save money. On the 7th of March I went to the cinema and spent 3 23 on a drink so I put the drink into food on the go. As discussed in previous videos in case you haven't watched them um, I do have a Cineworld Unlimited card that's why I'm never paying for cinema tickets whenever I'm like I'm at the cinema and I bought a juice. It's because I'm not paying for tickets as I go. On the 12th of March I was at the cinema again and I spent 9 28 in McDonald's. Prior to that we bought a shader box of um, the mozzarella sticks. I didn't just spend 9.28 on myself in McDonald's just in case anyone's wondering. Also I saw Onward at the cinema that time. I saw 19.17 the time before. Um, when cinemas reopened both 19.17 and Onward are very very worth seeing. On the 13th I spent £22.50 going out for drinks with a friend. On the 14th of March that was when I went to London. The expenses that I've got for the day I spent £5 on experiences and services is what I've categorised it into and what that was was buying a programme at Uncle Vanya. Then I didn't spend any money on the 15th or 16th then the 17th I went to the cinema for the last time before the cinemas closed and we went to McDonald's beforehand and I spent 4 99 When we go after work we're not we don't really have time to sit down and eat like a sit down meal before whatever showing we're going to that's why I was at McDonald's twice in the space of a very short space of time and then I also spent 3 24 in Sainsbury's on food on the go which was for drinks and snacks for the cinema. That is the end of my spending because it was after that that basically all the shops, the cinemas, everything started closing in the UK. So that is all that I've spent this month. As I said, we are two days before the end of the month, but I don't foresee any other spending happening at the moment. So the way that that breaks down, I spent £111.40 in services and experiences. That was two transactions. I spent £81.77 in socialising across six transactions. I spent £6.47 across two transactions in food on the go. I spent no money on books and I spent £7 on one taxi. My total spend for the month was £206.64. 
that was across 11 transactions all in and because I went over my budget in February I opened March with a budget of £221.52 pence to spend because I took what I'd overspent by in February off of my March budget. I spent 20664 altogether which means I have 1488 left which is rolling over into my April budget. So I will open April with a budget of £264.88. Again, I feel like this now sounds really silly to say because the stakes have just changed so much, but one of the things that I kind of realised this month, and this probably sounds incredibly basic, but I went over my budget in February, and I did say this was gonna sound basic, but that was because I spent too much money in February because I made too many big purchases. I didn't realise at the time but I think I entered February quite complacently because I had spare money left over that I hadn't spent in January. So yeah, in February I bought three theatre tickets. One was £55, one was £65 and the other one was £55 again. And then I also got my hair done as any of you who've watched that will know. Basically what I've kind of realised now I do appreciate this is so basic is that I can if I have a budget of £250 a month plus whatever I manage to roll over from the previous month so like this month I had £14 left over that's rolled over but realistically £250 a month for me is quite a tight budget so I don't think isolation potential lockdown notwithstanding that it's really going to happen that I'm going to end up with loads of budget rolled over. It might now happen but we shall see. My thought process earlier in this month was that that's unlikely to happen and what that means is that within that £250 the best way I think I can spend it is that I can have one big thing so whether that is that I get my hair done and it costs me £130 or whatever or I buy a theatre ticket that is £106.40 as the one that I bought this month was, I can do one thing like that. And I think I would rather, the whole thing is that I want to shift my mindset and that's also partially to do with the no buy is that I know I prefer having one really good thing that is what I really want rather than lots of things that end up adding up to the same amount of money that I didn't want to spend in the first place on an item. I'm very specifically thinking about my wardrobe here. I would rather have one pair of shoes or whatever that I love than 10 pairs of shoes from top shop or whatever that add up to the same amount of money as generally designer shoes that I really wanted um, and none of them actually individually are anything that I love as much as I love the big pair of shoes or the big ticket price pair of shoes and that is what I really want to get into my head is I wanted to do it by doing the no buy and kind of cutting that habit that I had of browsing and buying I wanted to get out of the habit of buying multiple things to try and fulfill the wanting of something else that I couldn't quite justify buying but I think that also applies to the things that I am allowed to spend money on within my budget this year so if I want to have like my hair done or whatever and that's a big experience or I want to go to a West End theatre show and that's a big experience whatever it is I feel like those things will feel they will feel like a big thing to get Whereas if I don't do those things, but I spend that same budget amount on various other things that in my head won't feel equal to that experience that the big thing would have been. So in terms of within my budget, I think I'm better having one big thing, but I have to pick each month what that big thing is. So quite simply then in my head, just so that they're like equated, if there's like levels of things and I know that like, a theatre ticket or a haircut are on the same level and I, it's you know a bit like the fast pass system at Disney you can only pick one from each tier of how you spend your money or how you get your fast passes if I know that it's a haircut versus a theatre ticket and you're both in that top level it makes me still make that choice which is exactly the point of this whole project overall is to notice how I make these choices and to address how I make these choices and, and to take note of the factors that inform these choices and basically to really acknowledge them and to see if I'm happy with the way that I'm making decisions. Obviously in February I wasn't happy with the decisions that I made because they led me to going over my budget. Could I pick anything in February that I'm like, I wish I had gone without that overall? No. I do wish I had moved something to a different month but I still want all those things and nothing else was going to feel the same as those things so it's just about if those things are really top tier for me and I don't want to compromise on them 
I need to spread them out. I realise that sounds very basic and it's probably, most people are probably like, yeah, that, that's what budgeting is. I'd realised I can make one big purchase and then still have enough money left in my budget to socialise and to see my friends and to not feel like I'm constricted by my budget rather than feeling the constriction into how I socialise or how I see my friends because in February I basically didn't see anybody for the whole month and I don't think that was a good thing for my mental health either but use the constriction on the big items so that I'm constricted to one so I bought one theatre ticket this month that was fine my plan in April was that I was getting my hair done whether that that will happen is remains to be seen at this point I think quite unlikely but you never know I think that's everything I kind of had to say about my budget if anything comes back to me I'll pick it back up but in terms of my no buy so I haven't broken my no buy I knew I wasn't ever going to break my no buy I very much respond better to having to cold turkey something go completely without than I do with moderation like if I try to do a budget this year as I'm doing for my items that are in my budget but I try to do that budget for clothing and beauty or whatever like I would have found that so much more difficult than just saying right nothing for a year see how you feel then we can look at how we reintroduce it I do find that overall easier and I feel like it's well it's late and we kind of have that time to do the mental gymnastics of adjusting to a budget for certain items and it's taking those other things off the table so I, I it was the right thing to do but I also knew that it was going to be easier to do that than to try and go into a full budget overall. However, what I still wanted to record was how that making me feel and how my feelings are progressing. So at the start of the month what I was really missing was clothing and fashion. In my February video, I don't actually know if I specifically said it because that video was so long and I now can't remember what I actually edited out of it but in February I got I was having such a bad month and I got really focused on getting back to Disney and the sort of comfort blanket that Disney offers me. It was mainly Disney holidays but the side note of that was that I was looking at the Disney store. I was on my Disney Instagram account a lot because I wanted to be enveloped in the sort of safety blanket of Disney. I feel like I've just repeated myself but it, it really is a safety blanket for me. It's a real kind of bubble of happiness. So I was on my Disney Instagram a lot in February but the flip side of that meant that everyone that I follow on my Disney Instagram is generally a Disney blogger or somebody who loves Disney so there's always quite a lot of Disney merchandise to be seen on this on the feed of people that I follow and that's what I was really really missing in February however what also maybe informed that is that at the start of February I bought my Valentine's Day gift I bought a pair of shoes so I made a fashion purchase for my Valentine's Day gift to myself so I don't know if that maybe also kind of fed the urge for fashion purchases for a little while and maybe that also played into it now generally I could buy something one week and still want more stuff within a few days so I don't think that that was a massive part of it but it's just worthwhile considering that that might have informed it. As I sort of came out of the way I was feeling in February, I still want stuff at the Disney store. Um, I'm trying to deliberately not mention specific things that I've wanted because I don't want to, if I remember things and next year when I'm shopping again, I decide, no, I want to hunt that thing down. I want to be on eBay. I want to go through that mission of trying to find something that I haven't bought this year. If I want it that badly I'll remember it to do that with rather than recording things that I'm not buying so I'm quite specifically trying not to say things that I've wanted but I had a lot of Disney store things in my head last month and some of them are still in my head this month. You know I'm not saying that I've just totally gone from wanting those things to not wanting them. I still want those things but I would say at the start of this month my focus was sort of shifting much more over into clothing and accessories again. I actually unfollowed on my Instagram. I don't follow any other bloggers on my main Instagram and now I have at this point three Instagrams. Three. So my main Instagram which is at Rose Keats which is like it was my sort of blogger Instagram for a while and then with the debacle of what happened last year I made it private and decided to treat it like a personal Instagram and I unfollowed everybody first of all and then I only refollowed friends that I know in real life but did not follow their blogger accounts if they have blog accounts. Then I have my makeup rehab Instagram where I mainly follow other makeup rehab people in the community. They don't all have blogs or YouTube channels or whatever but 
people who are kind of project panning or on no buys, things like that, rather than it being where I follow general beauty bloggers. And then I have my Disney Instagram, as I mentioned. I found myself at the start of March looking up certain blogger profiles, um, mainly fashion bloggers. I say mainly, pretty much only fashion bloggers or like lifestyle bloggers that I really admire their fashion choices. That's what I was very much wanting to consume and wanting to want in a way at the start of this month. So I just find it interesting that that's kind of where that journey is going because I am now into my third year of my beauty novi and there's the odd release that happens that I really want but overall I can honestly say like I don't really miss buying beauty. I did absolutely gorge on beauty before my novi. That was what made me really realise I needed to start my, my beauty novi that I started first of all. So I don't know if I'm just still in a hangover from that but there are beauty things that I want but it doesn't consume me. And at the moment the fashion stuff isn't consuming me either. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night thinking about shoes or anything like that. Which sounds ridiculous but I, at the absolute height of my like wanting to buy stuff like that was all I could think about and I would be doing something else and I would literally like be overcome with thinking about how much I wanted a certain item and I, I'm not doing that now. Interest in fashion basically peaked at the start of this month but then coronavirus happened. I don't want to kind of go on too much about it because I know a lot of people are saying they don't want the people they watch on YouTube etc to be talking about it because it's making them anxious and whatever but I kind of feel like I can't not talk about it because how such a massive thing like that going on in the world is making me feel is intrinsically linked to how that makes me feel about purchasing things or how I'm spending my budget even the way that at the moment things are shut so I'm not spending my budget on meals out because I, I can't go eat a meal out at the moment so I feel like I can't avoid talking about it but I did talk about it quite extensively in last week's video which was my get ready with me. I've kind of calmed down from how I was really really not in a good place last week. I was very anxious. I have as of the end of this week I'm now working from home but my boss also on Thursday sent us home and then said actually come back in on Friday and then changed his mind and said no keep working from home. I don't want to kind of go into it. I am in a very I'm very annoyed because the UK is not on lockdown and people keep using that phrase. We are not on lockdown. Factories are still going, distribution centres are still going, the construction industry is still going. My friend works in insurance, she's still going. We are not on lockdown yet. There are loads of people still in office, still going into their jobs. I'm sure if you follow me on Instagram you've seen me moaning about this all week. So I'm going to try and not get on my high horse about it. Wait a minute, if I just, if I just de-rage. <sighs> yes, everything I said last week, I was very intensely feeling like repulsed by the idea of shopping in the midst of a global pandemic. This week I don't feel quite as like intensively repulsed as I felt last week. Like last week I couldn't have even, I wouldn't have been able to bear to look at like a website or an Instagram or something to look for things to look at things to buy whereas this week like I'm not going to pretend I've not been on a couple of websites and been looking at things I have no intention of buying them but I've kind of calmed down a bit from where I was last week and I'm more like we're not going to buy anything but at some point normality will resume and you know things will pick up and we will shop again and we will go out for food again and it will happen it's just not going to happen immediately so I'm feeling a lot calmer than I was last week but I'm still, I've gone from wanting stuff at the start of this month to really not wanting stuff at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see how long that kind of ebbs and flows for and you know all that jazz. But yeah that's that's pretty much it I think for this update. So it's a really strange time when I started this project there's no way I could imagine that I would be sitting in March saying well, I stopped shopping halfway through the month because everything got closed down. That is realistically what has happened. If it hadn't got closed down, I think it is worth mentioning that I have £14 to roll over. And that meant that halfway through the month, I spent the majority of my budget bar £14. So I would have been having quite a skint second half of March anyway in terms of my budget. So yeah, it'll be interesting once it rolls over to April to see next month how I feel when that budget is available to spend again but the ability to spend it to actually go out for dinner or go to the hairdresser or whatever at the moment it's not there. We are being told it will be three weeks at the moment however 
they were on the radio earlier suggesting it will be three months so we'll see we might be in a position where my hairdresser will be open by the end of April but I doubt it and it doesn't seem like that will be happening going by what's been said at the moment but you never know it might happen and we'll just we'll see if it does so yeah thank you very much for watching this video and I will speak to you in my next one bye